in a little corner of the world near a little Italian village called Assisi in a little chapel dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary there once lived a little man who became a giant Saint Francis of Assisi is the most universally loved of all the saints he is known as a man of peace a friend of nature a guardian of the poor but Saint Francis was not always as we know him today the son of a wealthy merchant as a young man he had everything he wanted but lacked the one thing he needed in this little chapel called the Porzioncola which means little corner Saint Francis of Assisi found his way his little portion of heavenly grace his calling as a man of God in a vision Jesus told Saint Francis from the cross go and rebuild my church he did exactly that repairing the Porzioncola brick by brick building faith among his followers in the process he rebuilt it it's where Francesco lived it's where he danced where he cried where he prayed where he planned uh, where he wrote his rule and where he insisted on dying even within his own lifetime Saint Francis became a revered figure and the Pope declared the Porzioncola a sacred place the pontiff issued a special blessing called an indulgence that lessened the punishment for the sins of all who visited that indulgence issued in the year 1228 remains in place even today in another little corner of the world 800 years and 6,000 miles removed from St. Francis of Assisi stands a magnificent modern city named in his honor San Francisco it's important not to have a kind of spiritual amnesia not to forget the roots the past the history the story people don't want to lose their genealogies and their families and I think we as the family of San Francisco don't want to lose the roots of our own uh, spiritual history. This is his city. He is our patron saint. We are named after him. This is his American city. Angela Alioto has long felt a spiritual kinship with St. Francis of Assisi, and she wanted his presence felt in the city that bears his name. In 2005, she took it upon herself, like St. Francis, to rebuild the church literally. In conjunction with the Archdiocese of San Francisco, Angela led the effort to build a scale duplicate of the Ports Unicola next to the National Shrine of St. Francis on Vallejo Street in the city's North Beach neighborhood. I want people to walk into this front door where the steps say in Italian, Vi voglio tutti in paradiso, which is what Francesco said. He wants everybody to go to paradise. It was a labor of love for three years. Angela at first using dental floss to secretly measure the dimensions of the original Porzioncola. But the project later moved forward with the blessing of the Franciscans in Assisi, and it blossomed in the masterful hands of accomplished artisans. Master woodworker Lucio Ducchi crafted the majestic doors and the round table used by the Knights of Francesco in the 13th century, hand carving them in his hometown not far from Assisi. Those who will be lucky enough to first visit Assisi and see the Ponzunquilla, and then see the work that we have realized in San Francisco, I think it will be an incredible thing because they will feel the same sensations of love and peace that they have here in Assisi. It was truly a labor of love it wasn't just an hourly wage for them, it was something that they truly believed in, they felt inspired by, they felt honored to be a part of. Romero Lazzari's company specializes in accurately recreating antique works of art. His son Stefano did the breathtaking frescoes adorning the new Porzion Villa. It gives us great satisfaction to be able to bring this art to California. And for people in California who normally would not be able to travel to Assisi, to see the original, to see a faithful reproduction just the way they would see it here in Italy. 
The rosy marble floor leading to the Porzioncola is the famous Pietra Rosa from Assisi, just like the original, hand cut and laid by Maurizio Volpi. The paintings, the wrought iron fixtures, the woodwork, the stonework, all exact in every detail. The new chapel also includes an item that is not a replica at all, a priceless relic, a stone hand cut by St. Francis himself and part of the original Porzioncola. Dislodged by an earthquake, it was given as a gift by the Franciscan order in Assisi. Stone by stone, one brush stroke at a time, the little Porzioncula came together, leading up to its dedication on September 27, 2008. I think that the replication of the Porzuncula in San Francisco, I believe, is a real gift from God because it expresses an experience of St. Francis of a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of peace. But the completion of the Porzuncula Nuova, the new Porzuncula, is not the end of this project. It is only the beginning. The Porzioncola is the first phase of a larger plan called the Renaissance Project to transform the National Shrine of St. Francis into an international site of global peace, one which welcomes people of all faiths, as St. Francis himself would have done. His famous saying, always preach the gospel when necessary use words. We often think of preaching as just words. But Francis saw it principally as life, the way you live the life of Christ before others in such a way that you win them to Christ. The second phase of the Renaissance project focuses on preservation, with major structural and aesthetic upgrades planned for the larger church. Plans then call for the construction of a welcoming piazza on Vallejo between Columbus and Grant. And finally, the project aims to establish an international spiritual center of Franciscan prayer and thought. These lofty goals will not come without sacrifice. The painstakingly detailed, handcrafted work of the new Porzioncula alone came at a cost of nearly three million dollars. What we're developing is expensive. Beautiful projects are very often expensive. And sometimes people say, well, uh, why would you spend it on this when there are so many other worthy causes? People need bread and they also need beauty. People need a job, they need to make a living, but as Winston Churchill said, what you get gives you a living, what you give gives you a life. And I think that that's, uh, that's what we're appealing to, we're asking people to help with their resources to the extent that they can. To achieve the dream of the Renaissance project, to rebuild the church as St. Francis did, one need look no further than the Porzioncola for inspiration. It was there that Francesco gave up his worldly goods and dedicated himself to a higher calling in a tumultuous world. It is here at the National Shrine of St. Francis, that similar sacrifice will help lift the spirit of pilgrims from our tumultuous world who visit this little corner, this little instrument of peace. <laughs>